again. And here we are to talk a little bit more about JavaScript. And I'm going to continue with this shopping cart example, which is getting long in the videos, but that's okay. Um, you know, it's a good subject. It's fun. So here's my shopping cart. And right now you can see, you know, it lists items that you can buy and you can click on them and they get added to the cart down here. And the cart displays, um, actually it's displaying the wrong number there, but we'll, we'll fix that, right? I'll talk about that in a minute, right? Um, you know, it displays the items here and you can click the plus or the minus button to add or subtract an item from the cart. And this is the number of items you have in the cart and this is the price. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to replace this element with an input field. So that will allow you to type the number into the field. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Let's take a look at the, um, the code here. And the section that, that makes this block right here is this function called display cart. Okay, so this function displays you know, this, this, um, everything here, right? And essentially this is, a you know, some strings and some variables that all get put together into a single string. And it really, it's just translates into some HTML. So there's a, a opening list item and a closing list item tag. And then inside here, you know, there's a couple buttons, right? And then, you know, there's some other values, right? So these values and a couple of characters just sitting in there, right? And so, you know, the whole thing adds up to a structure that looks like this. Let's take a look in here with the uh, inspector. It looks like a list item. And inside the list item, there's the text, the name of the product, the count, the price, um, the total price, you know, seven times 122 in this case, right? And then there's a button and another button and a third button, right? And each of the buttons, we g I gave it the this data property data name, right? And that allows us to identify the item, okay? So this is how we're identifying which item we're going to add or which item we're going to subtract or which item we're going to remove, okay? <clears throat> so what we need to do is we need to put an input element here in place of the number seven, right? And we're going to give it this data name again. So that way when this, when the value in this input field changes, we can update that item by its name, right? So let's give it a try. So here we are. And uh, what I'd like to do is, you know, surround the count right here with an input element. So maybe I'll start inside this string here. And I'll put a space there. Input, and we'll do type is, I'm going to do the single quotes, right? Type is number, okay? And um, and then, you know, I want to close off my tag, right? So that's my whole input element. Okay, now we have to be a little careful with this, with these strings here, right? So it's got to be, you know, quotes, plus sign, some variable value, and then another plus sign, and then another string, and then a plus sign, right? So we just got to make sure we follow that form, and then we're going to be okay. So the name is going to be here, right? And then we're going to use the plus sign to add this input element. And our input element will have, you know, the type. And then it needs a couple other attributes, right? A couple more attributes. So I'm going to put data name in here, right? And then we'll want to put the name in here, just like we did in on the, the buttons down here, right? And then maybe, um, maybe I'll just put a line return there in the same way we did here. So it's data name, single quote, double quote, next line plus sign, right? So I did the same thing here. And then maybe on this one, we'll add another line return there, right? And then in here, we're gonna add one more property called value. And when do you use the value property in a, um, in a string, or I mean in, in an input element, right, then it, um, it sets the value in that input element. So, you know, if I put the count here, then inside the input field, the value of count will be the, the value in the field, okay? So we're just going to make sure that we get our strings correct here. So there we go. And this isn't going to function yet, but we'll just give it a test here, because if we 
if I've got this input tag, then it should um, display as an input. So we'll save it and test it here. And there we go. Oh, nice, right? So I got my input field. And then you can see here, you can type into the input field. And you, or you, since um, I set the type to number, it also gives it this little clicker. And you can click on that, and it'll add or subtract one. The input element also includes a step property. So you can set the amount of each step. By default, it's, it's a step of one. So, um, so we don't even need the, the, the step property here, right? So type name or type number, and then you could have done, you know, step equals and some value. Um, but like I said, the step is, is one by default, and that's perfect for us. So we'll leave it like this. Okay, so now we got a problem, though, because, you know, when I, when I do this, you know, the number changes back to the original one. And if I type a number in, like, like you know, it's 13 now, if I change it to 22, and then, you know, refresh, you know, it goes back to 13 because the input field changes in the input field are not affecting, you know, our data in the array. Okay, so we need to take that into account. Okay, so let's, let's handle that. <clears throat> so here's our next step, right? And um, let's give this... A, a a class name. We'll give our input field a class name so we can identify it with jQuery. We'll just do the same thing we did down here. Like each one of these buttons has a class name, and then we we call on that from jQuery. So I'm going to give it the class name. How about um, how about um, item count? How about that? Right there we go. Right. I th I don't think we're using that name anywhere. Hey, let's do a quick find and. Uh, See, nope, looks like it only appears in one spot, so we're probably safe to use this name, right? So we'll save that, and then I'm going to scroll down a little bit lower, and you can see these little blocks here, you know, on click, on click, and on click. Each one of these is for the three buttons up above, right? So the three buttons that we have here, you know, plus item, subtract item, delete item, right? Are down here. And why don't we... Um, do another one of these, right? And what we're doing here is we are, um, I'm typing is what, we're, what I'm doing, sorry. What we're doing here is we're adding an event to the input field so that when the value in the input field changes, we're gonna you know, have a function that handles that event. Okay, so we're gonna catch that event and um, make something happen when when the value changes in the input field, right? So we'll handle it this way. Oops, there we go, right? And, uh, and now we're doing pretty good here, right? We got this all set up. So now what we need to do is we need to find the, um, the name of the item. So we'll say this dot attribute. And remember we we added that attribute that was called data name, and that has the name of our product in it. And then we want to get the count. So the count, the number of items that you want to have in this, you know, in your shopping cart for this item, is going to be the value that you typed into the field. So for us, we can get the value from the input field with val. And remember, dollar sign this is going to select an element just like we did here, except this item count is the input field, and that is going to be this. So whichever I, you know, input item or you know, input field that you changed that triggered this change event is going to be this, right? That's our special JavaScript value. So, so now what we need is we need a function, and we actually don't have one, so we're going to have to add one. So the shopping cart, you know, it's got a function to add an item, but it doesn't have an, a function to... Um, to you know, just set the count directly on an item that exists in the cart. So why don't we do this? Why don't we say shopping cart dot? Um, how about set count for item, and then we'll do name and count. Huh. So we'll say the name of the item that we want to set the count for, and how many of that you know item that we want to set. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll go down here, and I'll put it right after this add item to cart. So we'll say shopping cart dot, uh, what did I call that again? Set 
account for item. Why don't I just copy this right here? We'll paste it there. Oops. Right. So we'll do that. And there's our function now, right? And then what we want to do is we want to loop through the cart. Right, so I'll say for variable i in this dot cart, okay, and then we'll say you know hey you know if uh, if uh, this dot cart item number i dot name, right? So we're looking at each each cart item, looping through the entire cart, looking at the name of each of the items in the cart, and then we'll just match it against the name that we have here, right? So we'll, uh, we'll say name, so if they match, then we want to say, you know, um, this.cart item i dot count equals count, right? And then we can break. No reason you know, we should only have one of any particular named item in the cart, right? And so, you know, we don't need to search anymore once we've found the one that we want. And then the last thing we'll do is after we break, we want to save our cart. So that saves it to local storage. So we have a function that does that. So there's a couple um, situations that we want to save for here, right? I'll just save the video now. We'll do a second one on this, but uh, let's save that and we'll test it right and uh oh i think i got an error there let me check it here oh unexpected token in in line 130 let's go look at it right i made a mistake there line 130 oh uh, var i in this dot shopping cart sorry so let's save that and we'll refresh it here oh there's my cart and then here, you know, I can set this, right, and refresh it. And it, it saved the 17 items, but it didn't update the count here, right? So I'll leave that for you guys to try, but we'll do it in the next video. And there's another little error that can happen here, right? Um, like for situations where if I set the item to zero, it should delete it, right? Um, let's refresh it. Yeah, see, now I got zero items in the cart, and that's a little weird, right? It should just remove it. So anyway, I'll cover that in the next video, and then we'll... Uh, We'll talk a little more about some other details and problems that can happen here and how to fix them. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I hope that's um, useful for you guys.